to get their ideas is to the library. Can you say library? Library! Authors go to the library and they read a lot of books like the one they're trying to write. When I tried to write a picture book, I had to read lots of picture books. And I noticed out of all the picture books I read, I didn't see a story about a snail. And so I knew that would make a great story. But I didn't know much about snails. So the next thing I did is I went back to the library to the nonfiction section, and there I checked out books about real snails. And as I read about the real animal, I got even more ideas for my story. Three questions you want to ask yourself before you get started writing. The first question you want to ask is, who is my hero or main character? And so I thought, who's going to be the hero of this story? Who do you think is the hero of this story? Tiny Snail. That's right. Tiny Snail's the hero. We meet her in the very beginning. Then I ask, well, what does Tiny Snail want in the story? What does my hero get at the very end? Raise your hand if you know. Yeah, she gets a new home under the maple tree at the very end. But now I need a middle part to the story. That's the biggest part of all. And to come up with ideas for that, I ask, what's the problem? Why is it so difficult for Tiny Snail to get to the tree? Does anybody remember a problem? That's right, snails can't be in the sun. And I learned that in the library when I did my research about real snails, I learned that snails are nocturnal. Can you say nocturnal? Nocturnal. Snail and authors write their stories down. They don't just write it once or twice. They practice writing it over and over again, as many times as it takes, until when I read it out loud, all the words sound just right. The same is true for drawing the pictures, because I illustrated Pollywog 2, and drawing the pictures took a lot of practice. Because the very first time I drew a frog, it didn't look like a frog. I took it to Mr. Bronson. I said, what do you think of my frog? And he said, it doesn't look like a frog. It looks like a lizard. <laughs> and I said, no, that isn't a lizard. It's a frog. So I had to do it again. I had to draw another frog on a new piece of paper. I showed him that frog. And he said, now it looks like a salamander. <laughs> on a new piece of paper. I showed him that frog, and he said... Now it looks like a baby dragon. <laughs> it's very important for students these days to hear what it's like from a real author and illustrator, that it takes a lot of effort and perseverance to create a story. A lot of kids today think that you can just write it once or do it once, and it's finished, and they need to know that it takes a lot of perseverance and revising to create a finished story. Perseverance is huge, especially with my story, Kaleida Notes, as I talk to kids about how I had to rewrite it 31 times. Mm -hmm. You know, and their eyes get like this big, and you know, like 31 rewrites. I've only had to rewrite something twice, and it almost killed me. You know, but you know, once you say, hey, authors sometimes have to do 31 rewrites, and, and then they kind of puts their work into perspective, and I think makes them just relieved that they have to rewrite something three or four times, and that's it. Yeah. So, you know, just to learn how to do a little bit at a time, to have self-confidence. I feel like so many kids nowadays, I mean, as soon as something gets hard, they're like, well, I'm not meant to do this. I'm meant to give up. And, and that's not the message we should be giving kids today. Mm -hmm. We need to be telling them to shoot for the stars. And the bass says, tonight is our big performance. Boom, do I need to practice, you know? But the conductor isn't here, and no one knows where to go. The flutes are frantic and flustered. The piccolos are peeved. The timpani are staying where the violins ought to be. The cellos are hysterical. Their strings are tied in knots. They cannot stop crying because bassoons are in their spots. See if you are ready to play the cello. Because here's the cello. And I want to show you how to do it. I want to pull my chair out a little bit. Where it gets hard is when you have to do both things at the same time. So it's up and down and back and forth, just like this. You know, it's not like this. That's wrong. <laughs> but when you do it right, it sounds like this. And we'll all do it together. Are you ready? Here we go. Very good. Excellent. That's percussion, brass, woodwinds, and strings. You are a great orchestra. Please give yourselves a round of applause. try to bring it down to their level and connect with 
with them at their age. So we kind of vary our presentation depending on the age of the children. I mean, if they're kindergarten and first grade, we do one sort of presentation. In the second and third grade, we change it up a little. And then for the older kids, we get even more advanced. And so we're able to try to really connect on their level so that it makes a bigger impact with them, I feel. Good question. How did I draw in the pictures? How exactly do I do that? Oh, it's very inspiring because the children are usually inspired after we do a presentation. The children are so excited and they want to write their own books. They say, I want to be an author and I'm ready to write a story now and now I know how to do it. And that makes it very fulfilling that, we're, that our stories are connecting and what we're doing really is making an impact with the children. I feel like, though, a lot of the feedback that we get from parents and from teachers is, is just huge too because we'll we'll talk to parents and they're like you know my child never want wanted to write their own story and never wanted to do mm -hmm. these projects and then all of a sudden after our presentation they're going home and they're coming through their books and they're and they're getting ideas and they're putting together storyboards and they're through working on their drafts and things I mean that is just so exciting you kind of just see the mm -hmm. the excitement of the parents and and in the teachers faces so I really feel like we're making a fundamental impact this story is about a little tadpole who will grow up to be a frog. And so if you look the word polywog up in the dictionary, it does mean the same thing as tadpole. It's just another word for tadpole. But I thought it sounded like a great name. So that's the name of my hero in the story. And in the beginning, she's a tadpole. At the end, she's a frog. But remember, for it to be a story in the middle, we need a problem. And I asked myself, well, what's the problem with my tadpole turning into a frog? And I decided the problem is Pollywog doesn't know she's going to grow up to be a frog. She thinks she's going to be a tadpole forever. And now that she's a grown frog, her favorite thing to do is to go underwater and play with the tadpoles. Because she knows that tadpole will grow up just like she did. But do you think the tadpole knows that? No. No, he's hiding in the grass looking at Pollywog like, why won't that pesky frog leave me alone? So the story starts all over again at the very end. You could go back to the beginning of the book and read it again from this tadpole's point of view because that's the new polywog. So it's a circle story. And what gave me the idea to do a circle story were all the books I read in the library about tadpoles and frogs. I learned the life cycle of a frog is a circle. So I made a circle story. And I thought if you go back to the beginning to read it again, since you've read it once in English, wouldn't it be fun to read it the next time in another language? So that's why we made it a bilingual book. It's English and Spanish because it is designed to be a circle story. And each time you read your circle story, you can choose which language to read it in, either English or Spanish. The story that makes the biggest impact uh, for me is Tiny Snail because Tiny Snail is about doing a little at a time to achieve your goal. So, and it's about perseverance. And I feel that story really makes a big impact. And it it really means a lot to me in my life. I mean, I've had to have a lot of perseverance in order to complete the project. Once you start a project, it takes a lot of perseverance to complete it. So Tiny Snail is almost like an autobiography, I guess. Mm. But all of our stories have a message. Kaleidono His story, Kaleidonotes, has a message. It's about teamwork. And then my story, Polywog, is all about overcoming your fear of change and adapting to new situations. And so each of our stories has a, a very personal message, I feel. Mm -hmm.